So hi everybody, my name is Levi Clay and I'm a professional transcriber. I'm here representing Guitar Pro, Arabis Music Software, uh, Guitar Pro 6. I've been a long time user of Guitar Pro software, been using it professionally for six years or so now. I use it every day as part of my job. Uh, I am a transcriber by trade, by profession. I do transcriptions for books, magazines, uh, DVDs. Some notable companies would include people like Lick Library, uh, Guitar Interactive Magazine, Premier Guitar Magazine, uh, Guitar Techniques, uh, oh, Stevie Snacks, which is now Texas Blues Alley, uh, Andy James Guitar Academy. The list, the list goes on. Learning Guitar Now is another one I'm particularly fond of. Uh, so yes, as I say, I work as a transcriber, and part of that is working. Uh, with notation in Guitar Pro. Uh, so I think I'm in a position where I can give you some pointers on how to use it. The way I've got this set up today is uh, not like that. The way I've got this set up today is uh, like that. Well, let me just see if we can uh, change that setting. Sorry guys, um, what we want is that. There we go, that should look how it's supposed to. Uh, great. So the way I've got things set up today, as I say, is you'll be able to see Guitar Pro here on the left, you'll be able to see my face in the top right, and you'll be able to see my keyboard here, uh, which I believe is actually quite an important part of working in Guitar Pro. What I want to show you is how I eff uh, effectively and efficiently use Guitar Pro, so I'm able to type quickly, um, you know, have access to shortcuts, short keys, etc, etc. So let's get started. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to open a new file up, right? And this first uh, video that I'm going to do is going to be on the subject of creating a new file, getting everything set up, no input and things like that. I'm going to give you all the tips that you'll need to get going and working like a pro. So down to Innocence movie. After the technical problems we've had tonight, a whiskey might be better. But Energized Super Smoothie works fine. So, how can we do that? Well, essentially, today's, as I said, it's really about hotkeys. So, in Guitar Pro, you're able to see uh, the hotkeys in menus and when you hover over icons. So, when I go under File, New, uh, if I were to create a new file that contained a steel string guitar, which is the default, I could do that with Control and N. But as that's not what I want to do, I'm just going to go to File, New and Empty to create a new blank file. So here we can see a new blank file. Now this brings up my score information. For argument's sake, let's call this Guitar Pro uh, Tutorial Number One. So title and subtitle. We'll come back to this, don't worry. Um, and that is going to give me what I need. Now, now it's all about creating an instrument. What we're going to need to create an instrument. Obviously, again, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can go into File. Uh, is it File? No, sorry, it's Track. Track and Add, which again tells me that the shortcut for that is Control, Shift, and Insert. So I can do that down here if I click Control and Shift. I do it with my little finger on my left hand and hit Insert. And that's going to give me a new instrument. That's not actually the way I do that. I just go down to here, the mixer at the bottom of the page. Uh, that is a mixer when I have more tracks in place, as you can see there. I go down to the mixer at the bottom of the play page, and I hit Add Track. So I add track, and I'm going to go guitars, overdriven, and six string. Now here's a tip for you. Um, you may be a rocker. If you're a rocker, a metalhead, and you're using Guitar Pro, you might think, I use distortion, so I'm going to create a distorted guitar. I wouldn't recommend it, personally speaking, and I don't mean to speak ill of Guitar Pro, obviously, it's not the intention here. I'm not saying that the distortion sounds bad, I just think the overdrive sounds very good. Um, so, all of my tracks that I work on, I'm always using overdriven guitars. I think the distorted guitars are a bit, um, a bit brittle sounding. Um, quite harsh on the ears, so if you're using an overdriven guitar, I would recommend going for uh, overdriven. So what that's going to do is that's going to create something like that. Now, just allow me to write something out real quickly for you, um, just so you can see what we're talking about here. Um, I'm not really writing anything in particular. I guess this gives you an idea of how quickly I can work in Guitar Pro. Um, right, so there's some generic stuff. 
put some medals in there. There we go. Um, so what this has presented you with, if I copy and paste that across many bars, don't worry, as I say, this isn't about imp no input at this stage, it's about setting a file up. So what this has created is a file whereby we have notation on the first line, second line, third line. Um, but I don't like the way that looks. I don't like the way you have this indented system here. I'm really not a, a fan of the way that looks. Uh, I see that we've got a decent amount of viewers sort of popping in. Guys, anyone out there that is watching this, I would really appreciate it if you hit the share button. Just sharing as many guitar related groups um, and if you're a member of the event on uh, Facebook please do share a link to the video in there if you're able to see it because um, as, I, as I'm sure I said we had lots of technical issues I was unable to to see the video um, I think I hope more people are able to see it now uh, but as I say it's really hard for me to say uh, in fact let me hit the share button why not eh <laughs> uh, no, no, not as guitar pro. Uh, oh, hang on, <laughs> copy link. Uh, oh, never ends, never ends. Let's just do that. Uh, cool. So as I say, we've got this system indentation. So the tips that I'm going to give you now um, relate to making your file look what I deem presentable. Obviously it's very personal taste. So what we're going to get to grips here, uh, get to grips with here, is the, um, the score information and the style sheet. Um, I access these on the keyboard using F5 and then when I'm there I can actually click style sheet at the bottom or if I don't have that open I can use F7 and that will bring up the style sheet. Now I think both of these are important. We're going to focus on style sheet for a few minutes. So in the style sheet, what I'll often do is I'll go over to systems and staves and I will click first system indentation and I will get rid of that. I'm not a fan of the way that looks on the music. What you'll see now is we've gotten rid of that horrible indentation. I say horrible, you know, it's, it, as I say, this is all personal taste, right? I just want my scores to look the way I want them to look. So if I go back into style sheet, again, you saw I did that with F7. Um, we could go into things like, um, I mean, with header and footer, I could uh, I could adjust the way things display if I wanted my subtitle, which is that where I put number one. I guess I could align that left. I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't look very good. Um, but there you go. Oh, whoops. You can see that being done. Uh, and if I do have things like, in fact, let me put some. Um, let me just put some words by in there. So let's go. Uh, yeah. So if if I put uh, Levi Clay under words, what you'll see is words by Levi Clay appears here. Now, if I go back into my um, header and footer, under the words part here, what it's got is words by, and then you've got uh, percentage sign and percentage sign words. That pulls that information in from your uh, from your score information. So if I wanted to change this. Uh, so it didn't say words by, we could maybe say taught by, and that's going to then display as taught by Levi Clay. Not usually a feature that I'd use, but you know, it is there if you want it. What I really wanted to talk about and, and just go through here with you is basic setup of your file. So under uh, page and score format, you might want to toy around with your global score proportions. So if you're working with, uh, I don't know, a beginner student, for example, maybe you want bigger scores so that everything's easier to read. Um, or maybe, in fact, we go to this um, and F3, yeah, F3. Sorry, give me a second, I'm just bringing up more. Um, just so you can see more on the page. So here I've got a bigger score with a lot more information in it. If I was to use the style sheet there, I might use um, global score proportions and bring things down to maybe four, which allows me to fit more information on the page. Um, it's all about the job that you're doing and making things look the way you want them to look for, the, for what you need them to do, right? Uh, let me go back to our Guitar Pro tutorial. Um, 
under F7 again, style sheets, we can also go under texts and styles, and I could change the size of any information on the score, so the fret number, uh, text that I input, chord names, anything like that can be adjusted here and it's recommended that you do that um, if you want to create your own look. As you can see, the fret numbers are regular, uh, Arial, 11 size font and regular, so if I wanted to go in I might change it to 11 and uh, let's go, <laughs> is Comic Sans in here? Let's be an idiot and use Comic Sans if it is. Uh, Comic Sans, there we go, let's, let's have our fret numbers as Comic Sans, why not? So now I've changed my fret numbers, will display as Comic Sans, font size 14, and I put them as bold. So now if I apply that, I mean, I don't want to say it looks dreadful, but it looks dreadful. <laughs> when you make lots of customizations like this, um, what you can do is you can then click the Save Style button. And I could then, uh, here, Comic. I've just called that style comic. Now any new score that I work on, um, here's something I've been working on for a book, I could then uh, under um, style sheet I could then load style and I could load up that comic sans style if I really wanted to and then everything, ugh, it's disgusting, then everything could display in that style. Uh, <laughs> what I'm using here is uh, Joe Books this for me is a very useful tool because as I say I'm working on some books at the moment for fundamental changes uh, fundamental changes in guitar and they have a house style for the notation in books so I get that house style and when I'm working on my files I just import that house style under F7 load style I put Joe Books and there we go it displays how they want them to display if I do want to go in and edit things I will go in and edit things so one more thing to take a look at in uh, F7 uh, style sheets. Let's go back to our Comic Sans look because why not? So under F7, if I go under Notation, there's a lot more options for us to consider here. Um, so hide in tablature when using standard notation. Um, uh, extend with essentially you can go through any one of these and, and ask yourself are these things that you want to display. Uh, a good one for us to talk about maybe would be this one, display bend effects in standard notation. Now if you look uh, here in this final bar on the first line you can see the bend in the tab but that bend is not displaying in the standard notation. If you wanted that to display in standard notation I would click display bend effects in standard notation. I click apply and then it will, it will come through and, and put those in. Personally speaking I don't like the way that they display uh, so yeah that's um, not for me but you know there are lots of things arpeggio arrows display second note after trill lots of things that you can toy around with here essentially what I'm getting at here is do experiment come up with your own unique house style if you're like me if you're kind of working to publish stuff and I don't necessarily mean in books even if you're just creating nice things that you can put on uh, pages um, like I do on my on my personal Facebook page on my business Facebook page that should be um, I, would, I would recommend uh, having your own house style just so your things have a unique look and they don't look like the stock um, the stock guitar pro look not that there's anything wrong with the stock guitar pro look but it never hurts to have your own thing uh, Christian Doss has asked, has the video frozen? To me, it doesn't look like the video is frozen. I can still see things. Um, but don't worry so much. Again, guys, apologies for this. I d don't worry too much about the live thing if you are watching live. This will all be archived um, and placed on the website later for you to watch and rewind, etc. So there's our, uh, you know, your basic setup of a guitar pro file. We've got, in fact, let's just start a new file just real quick just so you can I can walk you through it real quick again so I'm gonna go file new uh, empty in fact I'm gonna skip a step and go straight into electric guitar overdriven because I know I want an overdriven guitar I'm gonna type in my uh, score information guitar pro 6 well, oh, typo guitar pro 6 rocks yeah subtitle okay 
Again, then I'll go to Style Sheet, which I can access by F7. I'll go to Systems and Staves, and I will get rid of that indentation, just because I prefer the way that looks. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can see my hands have been relatively relaxed when doing this. Back in the day when I was working like this, um, I was using a small uh, laptop, much like this, which meant using a tracker pad, numbers across the top, tracker pad, guitar. Uh, what that resulted in was actually quite a lot of pretty severe wrist problems um, that I still suffer with to this day in this wrist. So now everything is kind of optimized so I can do minimal movement and, and especially minimal wrist movement. You'll see me move my arms, but it's often from the elbow. I'm trying to as you know as little wrist movement as possible in order to do this. Oh, how, did, how could I forget? And the one last thing that's worth considering, if we go down to the mixer, uh, which is here where you can see electric guitar, if you really want to set things up, you can double click on that. I could rename this um, lead guitar if I wanted to. And then that will display as lead guitar. Um, if I really, really wanted to, I could actually remove the standard notation and have just tab. So then things will display. <coughs> Oops, sorry. And things are going to display like this. It's not a look I personally go for, but the guys at Sheet Happens Publishing do like the way this looks. Those are the guys that do like the periphery tab books and things like that. Those are all produced in Guitar Pro. Um, so this is the look they go for. As I said, just not the look that like I personally go for because I'm a reader. So I like to have, uh, I like to be able to see both. Now something like that does come in handy if I jump back to this climbing up the walls, which is a job I've been working on for someone. If I bring the mixer up a little bit more, it gives me the option to go through here and and I can rename these parts. And it just helps me when I'm uh, looking through the track that that one is harmonics. This is clean guitar one. Oh, for some reason that's not on load. There we go. Clean two. Etc. That will help me, um, you know, work through my file overdrive. In fact, I guess a nice way of me dealing with this would be if I go, um, let me just bring up an interesting file uh, from back in the day. Let's go uh, transcriptions. A lot of transcriptions in here. Uh, there we go. Rose music. And then if we bring up a song like, uh, there you go, Dear God, which was done for uh, Guitar Pro is my songbook. So here, where I've got a lot of electric guitars, it would benefit me to be able to go through and adjust all of those. So in sections like, like here, I could... <laughs> it would allow me to be able to uh, tweak that and have that displaying how I want. Um, I do like this file actually. I like the pedal steel that I've put in. <laughs> it's actually a good example of what can be achieved in uh, Guitar Pro. So uh, let me just close that down and um, kick off with what we're doing. Okay, so that's how I'm going to go about setting up a file. Let's talk about note input. Now, Guitar Pro is very easy to input notes. What I would recommend is make sure you're using a keyboard that has the number pad here at the side. If you don't have a keyboard with a number pad, for example, if you're working on a laptop, you're going to be inputting a lot of numbers across the top here, and that will require a lot of hand movement, a lot of wrist movement, and it's it's actually quite difficult to do that and not cause yourself long-term problems. So if, if you are working on a laptop, I would recommend investing in uh, a USB number pad. I'm sure they don't cost very much. Um, I know you might be thinking, Levi, I've got to spend money. It's, it's your health, you know, that's what's important. You want to be able to do, you want to be able to do this for many years to come. Um, so I would recommend investing in a number pad if you don't have one on your keyboard. Uh, as you can see, if you watch me input, just watch my hand here, you'll see, uh, well, watch, so I might go, um, 
I don't know why I keep inputting this uh, uh, D minor seven off edge here. I play a lot of D minor sevens apparently. Um, you can see everything was, I didn't really have to do much. I was able to put, input all of my notes just using this hand. This hand is free, this hand is doing nothing. I've not had to use my mouse. And as you can see, there's no rhythmic variation, but I can do all those rhythmic variations just with my right hand. Um, for example, if I go, um, I, st uh, I said just my right hand, so let's do just my right hand. Um, what am I doing? That's not the right note. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I have to put in hammers if they if they need to be put in. So I, I have I'm going over to the mouse just to tidy things the way things look up a little bit, which is this is a habit thing more than anything. Um, but there you go. I've managed to input most of that without really having to move this hand. It's always been on this fixed position. So let's talk about how I go about doing that uh, because note input is obviously the most important part of Guitar Pro. I'm going to bring up a new screen for this just so I can walk you through this. So I should have this Guitar Pro rocks, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, hopefully you can see my mouse moving around. The way we input notes in Guitar Pro, obviously very simple. We click on the tab, and as you'd expect, we have uh, six lines for the tab. Obviously, Guitar Pro does support other instruments, seven and eight string guitars. Currently, I don't believe it supports nine string guitars. Let's just check that, though. Um, use six, sevens, eights, and twelve strings um, Yeah, for guitars, bass guitars, four, five, six, and seven strings. Uh, and then we've got mandolin, uh, banjo, ukulele. Uh, those are obviously other instruments. But. So hopefully uh, it will provide you with all of your, uh, everything that you might need uh, in order to execute these ideas. Um. <laughs> More volume I'm being asked for, so let me pull that up a bit. Don't, as I say, guys, don't worry. I'm going to upload this later, and uh, and I'll make sure that that I edit it as as needed. In fact, I should do this while I'm doing that. I'll I'll upload this later and edit as needed. Slam a compressor in where it needs to be put in, etc. So anyway, as I say, it's all about inputting notes at this point, right? So if we click on the tab, and I'm going to go back to my trusty D minor seven arpeggio, I can go to my A string using the arrow keys. I don't need in fact, let me bring me back there. Um, I don't need to, as you can see on my hand, I don't need to click on each line every time. If I want to put the fifth fret on the A string, I don't need to click on the A string, press the number five, and then click another place to play the next note, right? I can do all of that just with the arrow keys. Now, this may seem obvious, because hopefully it is obvious. In fact, let me uh, tweak that just a hair. Um, my arrow keys are here and I can move around the score with those arrows A string, D string, G string, B string, E string it's all there under my fingers I can do whatever I need to Okay. so I've put in my 5th fret and it's showing up as a semi brief or a whole note now if I want to change that note value I go up into my keypad of lovely buttons. Now learning to use Guitar Pro effectively and efficiently is all about getting used to these buttons, knowing what they do and for me personally learning what the shortcut for each of them is. So if I wanted to uh, write out this D minor 7 arpeggio in 8th notes, I've got the note selected, I would move up here and I would go to my 8th note and if I hover over that it will tell me 8th note. Perfect. Now I'm able to go back and click my note press right on the arrow key, press 8, and I'm still on that 8th note pattern. So now it's actually quite easy for me to go through. So let's uh, bring it back up here. That's right on the arrow key, up, 5, right, 7, right, up, 6, right, up, 5, right, 8. So that would be one way of doing that. You may have noticed that when I hovered over here, it said eighth note, and then in brackets, it's telling me what the hot key is, plus and minus. Now, if you look at all of these, what you'll notice is that 
for any given note, the hotkey is plus or minus. So what does that mean? Well, it means that when I'm on a given number, if I press the plus key, it will, it will uh, make the note shorter. So it will turn the note from an eighth note to a sixteenth note to a thirty-second note to a sixty-fourth note. So that's the plus and minus. And again, these are located on the edge of my number pad. If I was doing this on uh, a keyboard without the number pad, I would have to be using the, uh, the keys next to zero uh, Yeah, on the, the QWERTY side of the keyboard. So I'm able to do this if I want to change the rhythm on any of this, uh, mix it up a little bit, I'm able to just go through and do that. Give you a strange galloping rhythm like that. So if I write that out again, you can see what I'm doing. I press 5 and again this hand here is not doing anything. In fact I'm going to rest on my face. Okay, So I'm going to press 5 and I want that to be an 8th note so I press minus. I go right, I press 8 and I want that to be a 16th note so I press plus, right up, 7, right up, 5 and I want this to be an 8th note so minus, right, 7, right, up, Six. Oh, and I forgot, I want these both to be eighth notes, don't I? Five, minus, because I want it to be an eighth note. Eight, and then let's put a ten in, and I want this note to be a quarter note. So again, minus to make the note longer. And now I've got a phrase. Not the most inspiring of phrases, but a phrase nonetheless. And I've been able to do that all just with this hand. Now let me write that out again in the second bar, just to give you an idea of how efficient you can be with this just using the right hand when you put in the time and practice. So I'm going to go, um, whoops, there's no reason that this needs to be anything that's particularly difficult, I don't consider that to be particularly fast, but a fair amount of what I do um, as a, uh, well not a fair amount, but a reasonable amount of work that I do, I've just checked my emails and I've got an email uh, from Guitar Interactive magazine and they need some ghost writing and copy work um, and what that involves doing often is copying um, notation from a PDF score that's been done in Sibelius or Finale or whatever into Guitar Pro because Guitar Interactive magazine use uh, Guitar Pro 6 exclusively. In fact, you can get a free copy of Guitar Pro software, the light version, in Guitar Interactive magazine. So well worth checking out if you don't currently own the software. So that's no input. Now, <clears throat> this can be taken to its logical extreme. And that would be using the mouse. So as an example, let's say, let's say I'm writing something out. I go like this. If there's one thing you're going to have definitely learned by the end of this, it's going to be a D minus seven arpeggio, right? <laughs> uh, now let's write it out in a weird way. Why not? I'd still play it that way. Okay. I look at that and I go, "Wah! Oh dear! I've not been paying attention. I've put it all in as thirty-second notes, and this should actually be sixteenth notes. What can I do? Well." Obviously, um, well, I say obviously, I can click and drag whatever I want. I can highlight as much or as little as I want. This means that I can highlight the second part and then using common keyboard shortcuts like Control X for cut, highlight my new bar, Control V for paste, and now that information is now in the second bar. I could then highlight both bars and use the minus key to make these notes shorter in length and they're going to become 16th notes. Oh, I missed out the last note for some reason. There we go. And that's put me in a position where I've been able to change everything without having to rewrite everything. Now the control C, control V, control C for copy, and control V for paste function is something that is essential for working fast. If there's repeats in a song, it's very easy to do that. But actually, you can actually go one step further than Control C and Control V to copy whole bars of information. If I'm working, sorry, if I'm working in a bar, oh, if I'm working in a bar, not a pub, but if I'm working within a bar, what I will uh, often do is if there's repeated information. So, for example, let's say we're uh, let's say we're writing some Zach Wild type stuff out. 
um, and Zach is playing this. Uh, common Zach Wild phrase. There, maybe there's my phrase, and it's just uh, let's make that a six tuplets. In fact, let's not. Uh, let's just stick with the original four notes. So here's my four notes, okay? Common thing that Zach Wilde or any other pentatonic player might play. Four notes descending, right? I want these notes to repeat, okay? I'm able to just highlight those notes and press the C button, and it will duplicate that information for me. Very, very useful tool. Though I don't actually even need to do that. I can actually just highlight the first note, and again, if I press the C note, C uh, key on my keyboard, and I'm doing that with my left hand, it will duplicate that note and add it onto the end. And then it will move my cursor along to the next note. So I can press four times to duplicate that information. So if I'm writing out a longer phrase, like uh, the phrase that I wrote out previously, if I want that to repeat, I might then highlight the entire thing now this is really kind of really cheaty. Highlight the entire thing, but then I can see that it's longer than a bar. So then I'll highlight this, Control X, Control V, and put it in my new bar. And now I'm in a position uh, where the lick can repeat. So in order to repeat it, maybe I'll press C, C, then I'll go back to C, 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 and I'm really starting to get this information copied across quite quickly. Um, so you can see that. Uh, let's whack the tempo up so it might be Zach Wilde-esque 200. That kind of worked. Uh, maybe that's a bit quiet. Who knows. And I've been able to do that with the C key. The C key is an incredibly important part of writing stuff out for me in Guitar Pro because I'm able to do everything uh, there. Cont control C, Control V, Control X, they're all right there in my left hand. And I can use my little finger to hit the control button and then press whatever I need to um, to, to keep it going. So, uh, that's note input. Now, getting to grips with what these all of these mean um, as I say, is very, an, a very important part of writing your music out. Um, it's also worth addressing the rest key, which, as you can see here, uh, let's control Z that, uh, just so I don't lose that. Um, and what I just did there, the undo, I'm sure you can do that in edit, undo, is control Z. It's worth remembering that you know you can learn and reference these hotkeys by searching through your menus here, just getting to grips with things. If I look under edit, I can see cut is control X, copy is control C, paste is control V. What you don't want to be doing if you're working in the program as often as I'm working in the program is going between keyboard, mouse, guitar, keyboard, mouse, guitar. You want to spend as little time um, moving from one to the other as possible for, for the sake of your wrists. Okay, so if I wanted to make some of these rests, um, I could come up here and hit the rest key, but I hear what you, I know what you're saying. You're saying Levi, but that means going to the mouse. Exactly. There's no reason to go to the mouse because I can press the R key to do that same piece of information. So if I wanted to write out a phrase, I'm just going to delete that all again. Maybe I've got a phrase that goes like this. Um, trust the D minor seven arpeggio. Who doesn't love a D minor seven? Eh. come back to what I did there in a second and there There's a phrase, and I've just as I've been doing that, I've put the notes in, and when I want to rest, I just hit the R button rather than inputting a note in my right hand. I can just hit R, put my rest in, and I have a thoroughly uninspiring phrase. 
200. <laughs> At 200 BPM, that sounds ridiculous. So let's bring that down to 120. Put my metronome on that so you can hear a pulse. I mean, all I really need to do to that is add this bend. And you've basically got a Wayne Cranston. <laughs> so that's note input and rests. It's uh, worth considering other setup features like time signatures, key signatures. Key signatures are, I guess, less important, but time signatures, tempos, and things like that are going to be things that you're definitely going to be working with. So, how can we do time signatures? Well, I'm sure if I double click the time signature, no, nope. that's not how I'd actually do it. I would just click Control T. Makes sense, right? Control and T for time signature. Uh, and then I'm in my time signatures. Time signatures. Now I can obviously pick usual time signatures, common time signatures like four four, six eight. Another common time signature twelve eight. Though if I need to, I can go in and write something a little bit more custom, like 7, 8. And the nice thing about Guitar Pro is I can customise the way I want things to be beamed. So, in fact, let's do that, just so you can see what I mean by that. So, under Control t if I were to have everything beamed together like this in 7, 8, when I then write things in 8th notes, it's going to beam them together like that, which it's very hard to read. Obviously, that's a totally different subject for another day. This isn't about learning to read. This is about uh, understanding um, Guitar Pro software. So, a common way that you'll see um, uh, seven, eight written out is two groups of two and a group of three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. So I'm able to put that in, and then that will turn the beaming on my page into that which makes it a little bit easier on the eyes if you are a sight reader. So that's a nice feature, Control t for time signatures, very cool. You've also got the option to adjust your tempo automation. Now it doesn't seem that there's a, uh, a hotkey for this one actually, which seems quite odd to me. Let's see if there's a, see if it's written in here. I mean I guess there's, you know, there's no reason why it wouldn't be displayed. Yeah, no, there's no, for the uh, automation, tempo automation, there's no way, uh, no hotkey for that. That's okay, it's one of those ones that really you kind of want to set and forget at the start of the track. So maybe I hit my tempo, quarter note pulse, um, and I put in 150 BPM. But the great thing about Guitar Pro is you've also got this tap tempo feature, which allows me to um, put in the tempo of my song. One, two, three, four. One, two, three and it tells me that's 94 BPM, which is great. Well, it really doesn't like that. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> playing guitar profiles when I'm streaming, the computer really doesn't like. But that's fair enough. Uh, let's have a look and see if uh, the Guitar Pro page wants to be working now. Kind of sort of have things working <laughs> uh, not not quite what we were hoping for but I will be back again to do one of these don't you don't you worry about that um, sorry guys give me a second okay cool so time signatures control T custom 4-4. Oh, I had a bar highlighted. So it's, you do have the option obviously to put in individual time signature changes at given bars if that's what you want to do. So that's pretty much everything that I plan for us to cover um, in this first stream because I think that you've got enough to be playing around with there. Um, note input and things like that. What I would recommend you do now is go away. Just go away. <laughs> what I would recommend now is you go away and you get used to using Guitar Pro to write something out. Now, the way I would recommend doing that, I'm sort of looking around, seeing what books I've got to hand. Evidently, I don't have any books 
any books to hand. I've got a banjo book down here, that'll do. Okay. So, here's a banjo book. Any book, and take a look at what's in the book, and put it next to you, and just experiment writing that thing out. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what would be good. Let me load up. Um, guys. What should we put in? Uh, oh, giant steps. I don't know why I chose giant steps. <laughs> okay. So, uh, ooh. there's giant steps. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going. You, you guys obviously won't be able to see this um, because it will be hidden behind my images over here, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put giant steps next to my guitar profile. And I'm then just going to use my eyes to copy what I can see in giant steps. So I can see that the song is in 4-4. So I would do Control t put my song in 4-4. It's fast, 170 BPM. So I click my time, I put 170 BPM in there. And then I'm going to input my notes. Now, I've <laughs> I realised that actually this is, isn't a great example because this is from uh, the real book and therefore it doesn't have tab. But I'm a, you know, I don't, I don't need tab. I can... Can write this out uh, as as needs be. So I can see that I've got an F sharp, and that's uh, a half note. And then we've got a D, and then we've got a B, and then we've got a G, and this is a dotted. I've not covered the dotted note. So dotted notes uh, can either be done up here on the keypad, or I can also use the asterisk key on my keyboard to do that. So we've got a G, and then we've got a B flat, which uh, is definitely a subject for another day. Don't you worry about that. Um, and a tie across. Uh, we will address ties, um, actually. Why not? So uh, in order to tie one note onto the, another, oh, press the wrong button. In order to tie one note onto another, we have tie note. Um, the way to do that is you put the second note in place and then tie from the second note onto the first one. You don't click the first note and then tie to the second, it's the second note ties to the first one. And an even better way of doing that is using the hot key. I don't actually even need to um, put the note in, I can just press L and it will create the right note for me. Okay, So I'm just going to continue, I'll look at the next note and it's a B, um, and then we've got uh, an A which ties across, it's dotted apparently. Uh, do, oh, yeah. So you can see what I'm what I'm getting at here. It's uh, it's just good practice to be able to write stuff out for yourself uh, in you know in the software um, and effectively uh, do these things because this is what uh, using the software is all about. sounds like giant steps to me. also sounds way slow. Um, yeah, so using an example that contains tab is obviously going to be a more effective way of doing that. But this is what you're getting at. Getting used to writing things out, just endless repetition writing things out. If I take something like Smoke on the Water, and I can go... Uh, Copy and paste. Uh, whoops. And I've written out smoke on the water. So 
getting used to using the software is obviously the most important thing that you can do um, for doing this stuff. Now some of you may be here uh, not wanting to learn to write stuff out in Guitar Pro, instead wanting to use Guitar Pro for things like um, uh, you know, just downloading tabs off the internet or using uh, Guitar Pro's own My Songbook uh, feature to get songs in the national sign for Go Away. <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, this is great. I'm actually, um, I'm actually able to see the comments now. Facebook is working. Yeah. Uh, I, again, guys, I can't apologize enough for, for the uh, debacle that was getting everything running today uh, in... Um, <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, everything should have been working great, and it didn't. And now it seems seems to be working okay. We're reaching people. As I say, don't worry. I'm going to be uh, doing a full write up of this on the Guitar Pro blog, so you can, uh, you know, um, get involved and um, and see what you think of things on there. So uh, the last thing that I will briefly talk about, very very briefly, is the sound, the tone. Okay, so I'm using the RSE Real Sound Engine. We've not addressed that in the slightest, right? That can be found down here on the side panel. We've been using this tab, the keypad for notes. But if I go down one, I'm able to change the tuning on my guitar. Lots of common tunings that already appear. Uh, I'm, and I'm able to uh, address uh, the sound that I'm using. I really, 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 really like this as a feature. I really like this as a feature because when I go to a file like Dear God that I've you know done this is years old. Um, if I go to part like the solo, which is uh, there. Okay, there's the solo part, right? Um, it's really messy. I've not formatted it. Uh, if I solo that part and we hear it, now that's quite an abrasive sound. I can, if I want, um, you know, change anything about it. I can adjust the amp that's being used um, or where that amp fits in the chain, so the sound has changed. Not using the. Um, the tube screamer. I'm listening to that and to my ears it's quite brittle so I can roll back on some of the treble, maybe bring some of the treble down on the EQ pedal. So it's less abrasive to my ears, maybe a bit too soft there. Maybe then I'll put in um, let's say a blues overdrive, rack the gain up and push the tone a little bit. To my ears, there's still not enough high end. Let me just set up a little loop. And I can adjust it in real time. Maybe I add a delay in under effects and I go down to. Um, uh, tape delay so bring the uh, delay time level down now it's really started to bring things to life if you compare uh, where it was before where it sounded like this uh, whoops. It's highlight. That was without the EQ pedal. So EQ pedal. Overdrive. And then in context.
so it enables me to have that customization. Obviously, on a big file like that, there's lots to uh, to consider. But just uh, you know, when you're working on a single guitar part like this, sounds fine. Um, but maybe you know, maybe I want to change the amp. Get rid of the amp uh, under amps. Maybe I want the uh, the stack channel B. sound to it right drive the screamer a bit harder so lots of options lots of tonal options that can be achieved using the real sound engine so what I'm going to do now guys I'm going to pick up my guitar my telecaster and I'm just going to play for five minutes and the reason I'm going to play for five minutes is I want to give you guys the opportunity to ask any questions now anything that you want to ask anything you think I've missed out that you'd like me to cover in this session because um, I don't want to present you with too much information I don't want you to be overloaded uh, so let's have a look any questions do feel free to drop them in the comments and I will get to them in fact let's take a look Um, okay, so some good questions. Let's take a look at them. Um, so, well, yeah, so much more simple for writing melody lines. Uh, yeah, so but I, I stopped using Sibelius when I realised how quickly I could work in Guitar Pro. Um, like I say, Guitar Pro isn't perfect. Uh, there are things that I would love to have changed, um, and hopefully, you know, I'm in a good position now to be able to give that feedback to the guys while they're working on the new software, uh, which would make me um, make my life easier because there are little things that I'm, I'm not crazy about. Um, but yeah, definitely still, you know, compared to Sibelius and Finale and things like that, absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Um, so Guitar Pro 7, yeah, they're working on it. Uh, <laughs> is that Jose Garcia? Thank you for saying we're awesome. <laughs> Um, Nick, any way to do polymeters? When you talk about what you're asking there is more of a theory question more so than anything else. The concept uh, of a polymeter requires what po polymeters uh, are is when you've got two time signatures playing against each other. But when that's done in traditional you know, orchestral scores, they're not literally written in two separate time signatures. One of them has to be written in, in a time signature that it doesn't suit. So when you listen to music by someone like Virgil Donati, for example, you'll often hear lots of polymetric ideas. But when it comes to writing the music out, you have to pick one instrument to be the constant. One instrument, for example, to be written in 4-4, four, four, and everything else is written metrically against that. So if you're doing polymetric stuff, really you should be able to write it out in 4-4. Uh, in four, four. As I say, though, that's that's more of a, a, a transcription question, uh, or not a question, sorry, a transcription issue and a skill, more so than Guitar Pro offering it. Um, I know Steve Vai, uh, when he was working on his composition Bledsoe Blood from the... Uh, uh, the orchestral album he did there was a section where he insisted on using um, separate time signatures for different parts um, and he had to have the software that he was using rewritten in order to do that so uh, it's not something that I think that you that you really need um, so Jose Garcia don't you prefer using MIDI for writing and making compositions on Guitar Pro 6 no I don't um, I, I don't think that there's a I know like Tom Quayle is a big fan of the MIDI, uh, the U-Rock MIDI guitar. I've not found anything that's as good as my hands. Uh, I can type incredibly fast in Guitar Pro. I'm, I'm yet to see anything um, that's accurate enough. And also, when you do that, it, there's a degree of quantization. It has to quantize what you're doing within reason. You know, I'm not a fan of that. So, um, 
but that being said, as Austin has asked, can Guitar Pro 6 notate with a MIDI keyboard? Uh, yes, it can be set up to notate with any MIDI interface. I know Tom Quayle has experimented with that for his improvisations and things. It's not something that I, I personally uh, use or do. Um, so, yeah. Um, Luis, or Louis, uh, any chance to bring back classic Guitar Pro 5 key bindings? The Guitar Pro 5 thing and the touchy subject, you know, being here officially for Guitar Pro. Um, anybody that's still insistent on Guitar Pro 5 being better, the reason people say that, the reason you prefer Guitar Pro 5 is because you probably pirated Guitar Pro 5. Obviously, everybody has Guitar Pro 5.2. Um, and Guitar Pro 6 is not as easily piratable. So people fall back on, ah, oh, but I'm so used to Guitar Pro 5. If you care about software, move forward and use the latest and greatest version. Guitar Pro 6, we're talking about moving on to Guitar Pro 7 soon. Um, Guitar Pro 6 is great, and, and having used um, Guitar Pro uh, 5 for a long time before getting 6, um, you know, it was, it was a learning curve. It, when I moved into it, it was a learning curve. I had to learn how to use it again. But I never looked back promise you never looked back never once i was using guitar pro 6 properly and i cannot think of one thing that makes me go oh man i wish that feature from guitar pro 5 was here because it is not as good so um mike has asked about triplets half note triplets yeah okay mike cool so if we go back to my file here um if let's say uh, i need to write out some triplet eighth notes um Wow, I'm changing to a C minor seven. Okay, so I've put in my first note here, three, third fret on the A string, and I've used the three key on my number pad. I've used the arrow um, to get to that string. What I then do is I use the forward slash key that's on the number pad. Now, the forward slash key on, the, on a QWERTY keyboard is next to the shift key down here, but on a number pad, I use my middle finger. It's up here next to the num lock button. And that will tell the software to use a triplet. So that allows me to put in triplets. The same thing will be true if I want triplet quarter notes. Again, I've got my quarter note and I press the forward slash key and that gives me a triplet quarter note. And if I wanted to do triplet half notes again, I'm just using my plus and minus keys to change the length of the note. That's all controllable in the software. <laughs> This is not a rhythm you see very often, uh, but can be done. I mean, <laughs> there we go. There's a nonsensical. If I guess if I made that a double length bar, that would uh, that would work. But yeah, so triplets. That's how you do them using the forward slash key. Is something that I'll address in a lot more detail in a future stream. Uh, so Floyd Rose, good to see you, man. Um, the Guitar Pro is possible to make it use the sound fonts of an external sound card, such as a Roland Duo Capture. Mm. Um, in all honesty, I don't see that as being something that that is necessary. Um, if I were wanting to do what you were talking about there, it sounds to me like you're more talking about creating a file, and then from that point. And then from that point, using different sounds to, to create that, uh, uh, to create your vision, as it were. Now, if you wanted to do that, what I would recommend is working in a digital audio workstation, a DAW. Um, I would export the files as MIDI, import them into my DAW, and then from there, uh, assign the sounds that I want them to have, if that makes sense. That makes sense? Um, you can't do that in Guitar Pro. What you have is the real sound engine. And actually, you can turn the real sound engine off. Um, which will change everything to a MIDI sound, uh, which apparently doesn't work. Um, it comes out of a different place. And I can't. Hear I can't hear anything. My end. My sound just seems to have died. Um, yeah. So so there's that. Uh, let me continue. I'm just answering these questions. Um, Writing in free time or rubato, transcribing section music is slowing down over its duration. Okay, so that's a good question. Um, the thing with free time is that's not a Guitar Pro related issue. That's a transcribing skill, right? So if I go back to my file, um, I can indicate free time by using these double bar lines up here, free time, and that will put everything in free time. 
that's a reading thing. When I'm reading that, I see that this is in free time and I interpret it as such. You're talking about transcribing stuff that's in free time. Um, if you want to create a, a MIDI uh, replication file whereby you're notating um, the time changes, the slows and speeding ups of things, back in our insert tempo automation thing section, <laughs> I'm able to go to any bar I want and change the tempo at that bar, or actually in the middle of a bar, if I wanted the tempo to have changed here, right, so the song's at 130 BPM, and I'm, I need the tempo to have sped up, so here, I need the tempo to be at 140 BPM, right, then I can go back to my original, and I can make that, rather than constant to next point, I can make it progressive to the next point, so then what that will do is over the period of that space, the tempo will increase from 130 to 140. Um, if I then want to, uh, over here, have 160, gradually slowing down here to 90, <laughs> uh, I can actually do that in here, progressive. Now what we have is you can see a dynamic, uh, a dynamic tempo map that changes as the song progresses. Um, I can hide all of these tempo markings, um, but just so you can see them. Um, so that did work. Now if I wanted to hide those, I'm sure it would be F7, uh, notation, it'll be in here somewhere, page score format even. in there somewhere, I promise you. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you know where it might be. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so I can hide the automation. Um, whoops. Do that. Let's highlight everything. Uh, oh, damn it. So I can hide, hide all of these automations so you don't have to see them in the score. That can just be something that's hidden in the MIDI and the MIDI takes care of that for you in playback. So there's that answer. Uh, which pros would you say this software has over Sibelius, for example? Well, if you see me working in this software, you'll see that uh, I I can work incredibly fast in this software. You cannot work in Sibelius as fast as I can work in Guitar Pro. Can't be done, sorry. Um, sound banks for Guitar Pro 5 still have better things than Guitar Pro 6 one. I don't think that in the slightest, no. No, because... You, you've seen the, the customization that I've been able to go in and do in the real sound engine. I can make any sound that I need. Any sound that I need can be done. You know, I'm doing some country stuff. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's too brittle. Okay, cool. So I roll off some of the, the highs um, in here. I add a, uh, you know, like a compressor sustainer type pedal in here um, under effects. Compressor, the orange one is a, is a um, sustainer type sound, um, you know. That level of customization wasn't an option in Guitar Pro 5, simple as that. Um, the only thing I missed about Guitar Pro 5 when I started using Guitar Pro how to write the drum notes. Oh, Hans, you've got me. You've got me. Ah, yeah. So, uh, drum notation in Guitar Pro 5 was definitely better. Um, not well. It, <laughs> It's just a weird one. It's kind of like a shortcut that was created for you. You were able to write drums using tab, which you know, in Sibelius isn't an option, um, and that, that tab is uh, completely irrelevant when it comes to, um, you know, real music. Uh, I've just had a thought, though. Probably not, but you know, drums and percussion, drums, drum kit, add, uh, drum kit. Uh, I'm not able to add tab to that, unfortunately, um, which is a shame. Uh, yeah, you used to be able to input in tab, uh, but now you have to input it properly. Drum notation has to be done in the staff notation. Um, and it's not it's not perfect, but it absolutely can be done. Um, I've done some pretty heavy drum transcriptions in Guitar Pro. So um, that's for what I do, though, as a transcriber. It would be foolish of me to say that Guitar Pro is the best option for transcribing drums. The key is kind of in the title of the software. It's mainly for guitar players. Um, but, yeah, in terms of writing your own stuff out to, for practice or whatever, um, it, yeah, it would be nice to have that as an option. <laughs> Uh, Austin, 
In tabs, quite often where there's some Floyd Rose stuff, every note after will be off pitch, even if the bar returns to the original pitch. Is there some kind of fix for this uh, besides removing the dives? What you're talking about there is about understanding how... Hmm, how do I describe this? All of these buttons here, every one of these buttons, all this does is it's putting a piece of information in the file that the MIDI reader reads and plays back. So I don't use a lot of Floyd Rose stuff, the tremolo bar stuff, but understanding how it works and what, uh, how you get the notes that you want is important. If I put a dive in like this, um, you're not going to have a natural return to pitch. If I have a nat, if I want that natural return to pitch, I can do that. And that's going to give me a, a more natural um, return to pitch, the way it would happen on the guitar. So it's all about understanding how this works. That's definitely one for an advanced stream, though, and I, I do have every intention of doing that, talking about how to notate bends properly and things like that. So that does work. Um, <laughs> Scott, it is finally up. Um, and you've asked the question, is there, are there shortcuts to increase, decrease note values on the fly? I covered this at the start. Yes, there are. Um, it's all done with the plus and minus keys. Plus, using plus will make the notes shorter. And using minus will make the notes longer. When you hover over any of these notes up here, it tells you 16th note. And then next to it in brackets, it tells you what the hot key is. So plus, minus. And for every one of these, you'll see that the hot key is plus, minus. So you can plus or minus to increase or decrease note length. Okay, Nick, you asked about polymeters again, um, so I'm not going to answer. <laughs> is, it is it possible to convert a scanned PDF to Guitar Pro? No, it's not. Uh, it's not currently possible to do that. I mean, I say that, I don't believe it's possible. It's not something that uh, I've looked into. I can write things out pretty fast in Guitar Pro. Um, but no, it's not. So, um, Vladimir, let's say a song has 200 BPM and is notated in 8th notes, but I feel it should be 100 BPM notated in 16th notes. Can I change it quickly? I mean, all instruments, all tracks. Hmm, good question. Interesting question. Um, hmm. There's not a one-button way of doing that. If I were going to do that, I would change the tempo and then uh, I'd control... Control X every half bar and put it in the next bar, then highlight everything and press minus to half the note length. Um, it's not unfortunately a one uh, one button solution. Jose, is it possible to change the compass of a piece, changing all the notes and figuration proportionally? Um, Harmonize. Is it possible to change? Uh, to change I I don't quite understand what you're asking there. Sorry, um, it's possible to harmonize with any keyboard command option. Sure. I'm not entirely sure what you're. I think the second part you're. Uh, so in in when I'm working in Sibelius, um, if I press, I believe I've not used Sibelius in years. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, if I highlight a note that I'm playing in Sibelius and I press the number three, it will it will add in a note a third higher. Um, I don't believe there's a way to do that in Guitar Pro. Um, other than you know just writing it in, <laughs> writing it in quickly, um, changing beaming of notes, creating tuplets. The beaming I'm going to go into in a lot more detail in the next one. Um, beaming is very important. Um, oops. Beaming is very very important. Uh, this is something that that I would like fixed. Uh, by the next guitar pro. Um, here the things need to be beamed so I need to highlight those two notes and then go down here and click force beams but then also break secondary beams in order to get that nice classic writing way of doing things. Essentially guys for any of you that are eager to go out and do practice and learn how to, you know how to better use this piece of software the best thing you can do is just go through each one of these buttons you don't even need to press them, just look at them. Like this one is a Fermata, I press F in order to use it. You know, those these are just things that I, I know. Um, there's my bend, I press B in order to in order to do it. Um, here is my uh, my accent. 
um, sorry, staccato dot, and in order to do that, I do shift one. Shift one is uh, exclamation point. Right, so each one of these, if it's something that I have to use, like a trill is N. See? <laughs> um, if it's something that I'm having to use, I get used to the button where it needs to be in order to add that function in. So if you experiment with these, what you'll learn is when you get down to these ones, you'll find the beaming options are worth toying around with. So, <laughs> But Nick, to answer your question, um, oh, there's a great question there, Nick. Is there a shortcut to move notes up strings rather than deleting and typing again? Yes, there is. So let's see this note. I've got it here written at the fifth fret on the G string. Now, if I want to move that down a string, what I do is I press Alt and Down. Or Alt and Up. Alt Up. Alt Down. Alt Down. Alt Down. Up. Alt Up. Alt Down. Um, in Guitar Pro 5, there was a button that did that, and I can't see that button here. Let's have a look. Yeah, so they're here. Those buttons were in Guitar Pro 5. But Alt Down and Alt Up will do that for you. So if I wanted to change the position of this and have everything um, in a lower position, like that, for example, I can just Alt Up or Alt Down in order to do that. Very good question, that. Floyd Rose, for example, if I write a line in the 12th position, then I like to transpose it into open position. Guitar Pro 6 is able to transpose it with coherent related right fingerings yes I can do that okay cool so let's say we have what you just did there I assume this is what you're asking so I've got this lick here and it's written out and it's in the 12th position but you want it played in the open position well in order to do that we can use these shift buttons here shift down one semitone or shift up one semitone and that would be shift and plus or minus so I would do shift minus all the way down to the open position Okay. If that wasn't what you meant, if we had a lick that was down in the uh, 12th position, like so, I can then use Alt Up, and Alt Up is going to shift everything down to as lower position. Uh, sorry, ev everything down a string set. If I wanted it lower than that, then I maybe might highlight separate parts of it and do that. But you can see when I do this, the notation isn't changing at all. It's just the tab that's changing. And uh, you know I'm working on some some Holdsworth for a guy at the moment, and as you can see, it's pretty intense. But I'm not I'm not a Holdsworth expert, so when I give this file to the guy, what I'm going to say to him is, you know, you're more of a Holdsworth expert than I am. I've transcribed what I think he's doing, but if you want to change the fingerings of anything, you just press Alt up or Alt down in order to get there. So there we go. Um, Trevor Sneath, can multiple tracks be merged so all of them can be seen? The way you have merged layers in a graphic. Yes, they can. Um, the best way for me to demonstrate that would be if I go back to this file. F3. Okay, so on this file, let me just make it look a little bit neater. In this file here, we've got just the uh, distorted rhythm guitar, right? If I press F3, this can be found under View, Multitrack. If I press F3, as you can see in this file, there's actually quite a lot of tracks. Drum kit, hand clap, electric bass, and you've got four guitar tracks, three vocal tracks, a piano, and then there's a solo guitar track. If I press F3, what that's now done is it's, it's put them all on the score together, and you can see they're beamed together. I've not actually got all of them. The other cool thing here is you've got this view key, and it's like an eye. And if I wanted, I could remove, like for example, I don't need both the drums and the hand claps. So if I press the view button on the hand claps, the hand claps will go away. Maybe I want the, um, I don't need the harmony vocals. Um, so that's how I would create, put lots of files in the same piece of uh, score like that, which gives you a nice, um, you know, band arrangement. Um, that's how I would do that. If you're talking about, you know, for example, it'd be, it would be kind of cool if there was a way that I could press one button and have all of the, uh, the the lead voice and the harmonies and the screams on the same page, even though the screams only have a few notes. Um, that would be cool, but there's no actual way to do that unless I use the multiple voice feature, um, which is a bit, bit you know, it's, it's not really 
doing the it's not going to really uh, create the best solution for you there so um, which advice would you tell us to know how to transcribe something that's in our minds rhythmically and melodically but mainly rhythmically I would love to answer that question but that's a very deep question that's uh, <laughs> I feel like a dick for saying it but that's nothing to do with this software um, if you're interested in that the best thing that you can do is you can follow my transcriptions page and on there I'm often giving away uh, tips and tricks on how to actually transcribe um, if that makes sense uh, Furthermore, I cannot get right hand finger positions. Pima to show when I write notes tabs. Okay, yeah, cool. So um, I can show you how to do that. So under here, we go left hand fingering. That will bring up a fingering chart. And in there, I can click one, four, three, one, two, four, one, three. One, four, two, one, two, uh, three, even, sorry, uh, four, and one. And that's worked, right? You can see those appearing on the on the staff, uh, staff there. Now, I can, um, I've never done this myself because I, d I don't use the Pima. Um, sorry, that's, that's uh, left hand fingering. Um, I'll do the Pima thing in a second. That's left hand fingering. If we go into um, notation, uh, sorry, style sheet, which I talked about at the start. Here we go. Look, so right hand fingering. You can use any of those options: the PMAC and before note. Uh, you can have it above the staff, below the staff, before the note. So I've, uh, I can change that, and I've, maybe I'll put it below the note. So it displays like that, and if I want to do uh, right hand, uh, how would I play this? P, uh, P, P. Oh, whoops. See, things have greyed out there, and that's because if you look in the tab, I'm not actually highlighting the notes. So I don't have to be I, M, A, so on and so forth. And as you can see, they are displaying on the staff there. Okay. Hey Lever, I really dig this kind of notation process. I'm working now over 10 years with Finale and Love arranging was Okay, so let me let me talk about that that question yes you are 100% right the way I have notated this is unacceptable it's absolutely unacceptable I for a professional publication I would never do that I would this for for publishing I would never ever do that I would do control K whoops control K I would minor key I would put it in G minor that's gonna take care of the accidentals and it's gonna uh, give me the a flat and the D flat right um, but let's say I'm transcribing something, um, I mean actually I can give you the best example right, and you'll see this when you look at my book, uh, and you will look at my book because my book will be great and you'll love it. I see people write out the uh, A blues scale right like this. So they'll write this right, and I look at this and I go whoa 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 what is that D sharp, that's no good. There is a and harmonic equivalent button here, change accidental, and it's control alt eight, and I use it all the time. It's the blues scale, that's an E flat, not a D sharp. So I can go in and I can adjust. Obviously it's not gonna change the notes, but it will change the, um, the harmonic equivalents. So if I'm writing out in jazz, in fact, if you were on a few minutes ago when you saw me writing in uh, writing giant steps out, I needed to change some of the harmonic equivalents to put B flats in rather than A sharps, etc. Um, so yes, it can be done. You can make things look correct in terms of the score, if needs be. And you know, if that's something that I want to do, uh, that's what I do. How can I make two files play simultaneously? I don't believe you can. Don't believe you can. Could be wrong on that one, but I don't believe you can. Um, 
sorry guys, I'm just checking my personal notifications to see if there's any messages. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, writing in multiple voices to separate bass from treble. Easy reading, counterpoint. Yep, easy to do. Um, in fact, I guess the best way, rather than me demonstrating that, because I honestly would rather do that in another video, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to go into, uh, it's not in my Dropbox, uh, it's in Guitar Videos, Scotty, and then if I, if I load up something like Mystery Train, you can see that I've notated that with uh, left and right stems. I can't hear it on end, but that should be playing okay, right? And as you can see, that's the second voice and let me highlight them. That's second voice, first voice and both together, and that's obviously an important part of writing that style out. I do a lot of transcriptions doing that sort of thing. Scotty Anderson, Anderson, <laughs> the uh, Chet Atkins thing. Um, cool, so will Guitar Pro 7 have an option to be uh, as a plugin? I can't tell you that one um, because I'm not developing it. Bar full of quarter notes will naturally become smaller than a bar full of 16th notes. How do you make bars the same size? Good question. Um, I have design mode down here activates the design mode, control alt d when I do that, that gives me these triangles and it allows me to stretch bars and space things the way I want them to display so I can make bars look look right this transcription is spaced all ok um, so that's not really a problem but uh, yeah so there's your answer there is there a way around the colour of White Guitar Pro users uh, as when you want to put into a book, the white is slightly grey. Um, if if you wanted to put something into a book, you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't print screen. You'd you'd export as a as a PDF or a PNG. Definitely not a PNG for a book, you know. But I'd export as a PDF, and the PDF will come out as white. So one more question: When I import Tab Pro, it has ghost notes greyed out representing one of the melodies or voices uh, do you know I bring them to fully into the score uh, tab pro what is a tab pro <laughs> oh, okay um, I don't have the answer to that Trevor unfortunately because I uh, you know I'm not the software developer um, I can tell you what I use but what I would say is you're talking about uh, compatibility issues between two different ver two different types of software um, and it's never going to be perfect and ultimately it's not I don't think it's in Guitar Pro's interest to make that perfect <laughs> uh, Floyd Rose, so if you wrote that scale in D minor you're able to transpose it in any key with the previous function yeah, absolutely so um, uh, let's uh, say I wrote out my scale scale if I wanted that in B minor I just uh, I can either highlight the entire lot and shift it up to or uh, highlight the entire lot and uh, oh, I forgot the shortcut shift and plus of course or sh uh, shift and plus so I can transpose that yeah very easily why don't I use Windows 10 uh, I've, I operate very much under if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of uh, mantra in life. So if it ain't broke, I ain't, I ain't fixing it. Right, so I'm going to play, and if any questions come in, great. If not, then I'm going to log off.
let's say I have a song in F minor and I put the tabs in B flat minor. However, if I press A, Guitar Pro suggests A sharp minor, and I need to use a mouse to choose the B flat minor, meaning the Guitar Pro doesn't understand the key signature. Yeah, it's a very good point. Guitar Pro, uh, uh, Guitar Pro understands key signatures depending on where you fall in the circle of fifths. So if I'm in the circle of fifths and I use um, uh, a key signature which has flats, so if I'm in, if I write something in the key of F that has a B flat in there, um, any time an A flat or or, uh, or a G sharp is needed, if I put a G sharp in, it will automatically show as an A flat because I'm in a flat key signature. Um, in C, if you work with no key signature, it will automatically notate with sharps. Uh, which is why I have to change the, the D sharps to E flats when I write out the A minor, a, uh, a blues scale. Sorry. Yeah. So um, it currently doesn't it doesn't understand um, keys, which you know, no reason it can't be fixed for guitar pro seven. So I'm going to keep playing. So I think that's me for the night, guys. I'm just going to check if there's any more questions in. And if there is, I'll answer them. And if not, I'm going to go to sleep. Because it's uh, half past 12 at night here in sunny Scotland. I make the same old joke time and time again. It's never sunny in Scotland. <laughs> uh, play some Tommy Emmanuel. It'll be hard to transcribe even with Guitar Pro 6. No, no. Uh, I've transcribed my fair share of Tommy Emmanuel. Don't you worry about that. 
Uh, personal approach to creating drum parts. Uh, I mean, are you talking about compositionally? Learn to play drums. <laughs> I can play a bit of drums and therefore it kind of helps with my transcribing. So if you have any more questions, import, export, notation, Guitar Pro 7 or anything else, feel free to contact our team. Yes, they will help. Um, nice getting crazy with those scales. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, yes, cool. So we have no more questions. Uh, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It really does mean the world. Um, not just to me, but obviously to Guitar Pro, who have been kind enough to uh, have me do this stream for you. Hopefully I'll be back to do another one in future, and uh, it won't be as much of a disaster as this one was at the start, where people couldn't see the stream for some reason. Um, if you have enjoyed this, please do share the video with your friends. Don't worry about uh, if you've missed any of it, I'm going to be uh, uploading the entire thing to the Guitar Pro website. And we'll do a full write-up of everything that we've covered about note input and things like that, full of um, all that good stuff with you know, diagrams, etc. To really help you nail this stuff and give you some homework so you can go away and work on it. Um, if you have enjoyed this also, please do uh, feel free to follow my personal page, which uh, obviously is Levi Clay more than happy to get to know some of you on there or all of you uh, my business page is Levi Clay Transcriptions you can obviously find a lot of Guitar Pro stuff on there I'm obviously posting about Guitar Pro type stuff on there all the time um, because I use it daily um, and you can see more examples of my transcription work and playing um, etc um, hi man I said hi man there you go <laughs> uh, cool so there we go like I say please do add me uh, and I can answer any of your questions further and I will be covering more of this stuff hopefully in future of course one more time massive massive thank you to the guys at Guitar Pro the guys and girls at Guitar Pro that should be been using the software for many years and I'll continue to keep using the software because it makes me happy and it uh, makes my job easier so peace out guys uh, much love as always and uh, fingers crossed our she is shown goodbye